Now, in the discussion of general pharmacology, right? Let me tell you what is called as new drug development. Right? Let me tell you what is called as new drug development. So, if you see this particular new drug development, drug development process, right, it is broadly divided into three phases or three subheadings, okay. So, drug development process, right, drug development process, it is broadly divided into three important subsets right broadly divided into three important subsets number one it is what is called as drug discovery phase right it is what is called as the drug discovery phase and the second one is the preclinical studies right the second one is the preclinical studies and the third one is the clinical trials right the third one is the clinical trials so drug development process is broadly divided into these three phases one is drug discovery phase, preclinical studies and clinical trials. Now, first let me discuss the drug discovery phase, okay. So, if you take this particular drug discovery phase, remember most of the new drugs, they are discovered through random screening, compound oriented approach, target oriented approach, or rational drug designing okay so if you take this drug discovery phase most of the new drugs they are discovered right most of the new drugs they are discovered through what is called as random screening Right, and the second method for the drug discovery is the compound oriented right the compound oriented and the third in the drug discovery may be target oriented right target oriented and the fourth one is rational drug designing. right rational drug designing okay so these are the four important thing in the drug discovery phase now first let me take up the random screening right let me discuss about the random screening so how is this particular drug discovery occurs via the random screening let me discuss now what exactly is done in the random screening Remember the large number of, right, what we do in this random screening. Large number of the chemical entities, they are subjected to a battery of tests to explore the different types of the biological activities, right. What we are doing here, large number of chemical entities, right, large number of chemical entities right they are subjected to a battery of tests right they are subjected to a battery of tests and what is the purpose of subjecting to a battery of tests 
mainly to explore the different types of the biological activities to explore different types of biological activities right to explore different types of the biological activities and this is also called high throughout screening right this is also called right this is also called as high throughout screening okay so this is what is called as the random screening right so large number of chemical entities are subjected to a battery of tests to explore different types of biological activities and this is also called as high throughout screening so by random screening there can be a new drug development and what is the second one that is compound oriented now let me discuss the compound oriented so what are we discussing now we are discussing the new drug development so drug development process is divided into three phases one is drug discovery phase preclinical studies and clinical trials and in the drug discovery phase the drug drug is discovered through either random screening or compound oriented or target oriented or rational drug designing in random screening what are we doing we are subjecting the large number of chemical entities are subjected to a battery of tests to explore a different type of the biological activities and it is also called as high throughout screening now let me discuss the compound oriented now after having discussed about random screening let me tell you what do you mean by the compound oriented right let me discuss about the compound oriented now if you take this particular compound oriented remember here chemicals are developed from modification of the structure of an established drug right here what is there in compound oriented already there is an established drug so in this compound oriented already there is an established drug and the chemicals they are developed from modification of the structure of an established drug okay so in compound oriented remember the chemicals they are developed from right the chemicals they are developed from modification right they are developed from modification of structure right modification of structure of an right of an established drug that is what is called as the compound oriented now remember this compound oriented it is called molecular modification right it is called as molecular modification now let me tell you an example of this right let me tell you the example of the compound oriented now the examples are like you take thiazides thiazides they are a group of diuretics right they are a group of diuretics and these thiazides were developed by modifying the structure of acetazolamide right these thiazides they are developed right they are developed by modifying an established drug right what is that particular established drug that is modifying the structure of acetazolamide 
right modifying the structure of acetazolamide right what is acetazolamide this is also a diuretic which is nothing but it is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor right which is nothing but carbonic anhydrase inhibitor so this is what is called as the compound oriented so remember the chemicals are developed from modification of an established drug and it is called as molecular modification the example is thiazides were developed by modifying the structure of acetazolamide now the third one is your target oriented right the third one is target oriented now what do you mean by this target oriented remember a point here a valid biochemical or molecular target is used to search for promising compounds right so here what are we doing that is target oriented what are we trying to do we are trying to make out a valid biochemical or molecular target a biochemical or right biochemical or molecular target is used to search right it is used to search for promising compounds right it is used to search for the promising compounds now what is the examples for this target oriented the example says now we have a system which is called as the ras pathway and this is called as renin angiotensin right renin angiotensin aldosterone system right renin angiotensin aldosterone system that is what is called as ras pathway now here what will happen is the renin right where is this renin produced from remember renin is the substance which is being produced by jg apparatus that is juxta glomerular apparatus which is present in the kidney right in the jg apparatus you have jg cells jg cells will produce renin and this renin it acts on angiotensinogen right angiotensinogen and this angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1 and this angiotensin 1 in the presence of angiotensin converting enzyme is converted to angiotensin 2 all right now here you see now this angiotensin 2 what it will do it will cause vasoconstriction and it will also cause aldosterone release right it will also cause aldosterone release okay now what are we doing here here in target oriented a valid biochemical or molecular target is used to search for promising compounds now we have a group of drugs which are called as ac inhibitors right that is angiotensin converting inhibitors converting enzyme inhibitors and we have other group of drugs which are called as angiotensin receptor blockers right we have two groups of drugs one is ac inhibitors that is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor and arbs that is angiotensin receptor blockers now ac inhibitors and arbs they were developed by forming compounds who can stop this particular ras pathway what does that mean the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors they will inhibit this particular enzyme that is angiotensin converting enzyme you take angiotensin receptor blockers now you take this angiotensin 2 this angiotensin 2 it should come and act on the angiotensin receptors right it should come and act on the angiotensin receptors only and only when angiotensin 2 acts on angiotensin receptors then you have vasoconstriction and as well as the aldosterone release by the angiotensin 2 now what does this angiotensin receptor blockers will do is this angiotensin receptor blockers will go and block the angiotensin receptors right will go and block the 
angiotensin receptors that is what is being done by the angiotensin receptor blockers now a point what you should remember here is now what are we doing here a valid biochemical or molecular target is used to search for promising compounds that is the ac inhibitors and as well as the angiotensin receptor blockers they were developed by forming the compounds who can stop this particular ras pathway so both of these particular compounds what are they doing they can stop the ras pathway so it is they are a valid biochemical or molecular targets which are used to search for promising compounds so that is what is called as the target oriented right next now what is the fourth one that is called as rational drug designing right so we have discussed random screening compound oriented and target oriented in random screening what are we doing large number of chemical entities are subjected to a battery of test to explore different types of biological activities right and it is also called high throughout screening in compound oriented what are we doing the chemicals are developed from the modification of the structure of an established drug and it is also called molecular modification target oriented a valid biochemical or molecular target is used to search for promising compounds now let me discuss about the rational drug designing right rational drug designing now in this rational drug designing as a part of the new drug delivery what are we doing here remember designing of a new molecule based on understanding of biological mechanism and drug receptor structure that is what is called as the rational drug designing so what are we doing here we are designing a new molecule so designing of right designing of a new molecule based on understanding of right based on the understanding of biological mechanism right based on the understanding of the biological mechanism and based on the understanding of the drug receptor right based on the understanding of the drug receptor structure now let me tell you an example here you take the example that is proton pump inhibitors right proton pump inhibitors they are used in the treatment of the peptic ulcers and we have another group of drugs that is selective cox2 inhibitors selective cox2 inhibitors they are nsaids that is non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs they act by inhibiting the enzyme that is cox cyclooxygenase enzyme and we have nsaids as non selective cox inhibitors where they inhibit both cox1 and cox2 so in this rational drug designing remember there is designing of the new molecule based on understanding of the biological mechanism and drug receptor structure the examples are what proton pump inhibitors like what does this proton pump inhibitors do this particular proton pump inhibitors they will go and inhibit the proton pump which is present in the parietal cells of the stomach and they will inhibit the hcl production and you take the cox inhibitors the examples of the cox inhibitors they, that is selective cox2 inhibitors the examples they include selicoxib valdicoxib and as well as rafikoxib right these drugs they go and selectively inhibit the cox2 enzyme and thereby further production of the prostaglandins and cyto leukotriene cytokines will not occur so that is what is your rational drug design so within the drug discovery like we have random screening compound oriented target oriented and rational drug design so 
in the part of new drug delivery system we have the first phase that is drug discovery phase and the second one is the preclinical studies and the third one is the clinical trials so after having discussed about the rational drug designing remember all these four approaches right these all approaches they result in the selection of the several compounds right after doing this particular four methodologies in the drug delivery phase all these approaches they result in all right all these approaches they result in selection of several compounds right they result in selection of right they result in selection of several compounds right and the selection of several compounds this process is called as the lead finding right this process is called right this process is called as the lead finding now now after the selection of several compounds these are then subjected to various procedures to identify one or two drug candidates right so these are subjected all right these are subjected to various procedures all right these are subjected to various procedures for what to identify right to identify one or one two two drug candidates okay so what are we doing here from several compounds we are minimizing them to one to two drug candidates in that particular new drugs and that is what is called as the lead compounds right now these one to two drugs they are called as right this is called as the lead compounds right and this particular lead compounds they are suitable for further investigation right they are suitable for further investigations all right next now now selecting the lead compounds suitable for further investigations this process is called lead optimization right this process is called as right this process is called as lead optimization now these lead compounds are then evaluated in the preclinical phase okay so this particular lead compounds they are subjected to the preclinical phase right they are subjected to preclinical phase so what are we discussing now we are discussing how is this particular new drug is being developed right how is this particular new drug is being developed so in this new drug development the drug development process is broadly divided into three phases one is your drug discovery phase so by the end of your drug discovery phase what are we getting we are getting the lead compounds and this particular lead compounds they are moved on to the second phase that is the preclinical phase or your preclinical studies after the preclinical studies in new drug development what we have is a clinical trials so now let me discuss about the preclinical studies 
Now, let me discuss about the preclinical studies. Right, let me discuss about the preclinical studies. Now, here at the end of the first phase, like what did we get? We have got the lead compounds. Now, in the preclinical studies, the lead compounds are tested on the animals. Right, this particular lead compounds, remember, they are being tested right they are being tested on the animals now what is the purpose of being tested on the animals the lead compounds are tested on animals to know the whole pharmacological profile right to know whole pharmacological profile now, now a point what you should remember is the tests are first performed on the small animals, right? The tests they are performed on the small animals. Now, what are those particular small animals? They include mice, they include rat, they include guinea pig. right mice rat guinea pig etc and then these particular tests they are done on the large animals right these particular tests they are done on the large animals like large animals like cat dog and monkey right cat dog and monkey all right now, all studies like pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, toxicology, therapeutic index, etc. are performed and promising compounds are selected that can be evaluated in the humans. Okay. So, what do we do in the preclinical studies is, we will study the pharmacokinetics, we will study the pharmacodynamics we also study toxicology we also study the therapeutic index right of this particular lead compounds then you get what by end of this particular study you get what is called some of the promising compounds right some of the promising compounds and this particular promising compounds they are selected that can be evaluated in humans right that can be evaluated in humans so remember at the end of the first phase in the new drug development we got the lead compounds which were being tested on the animals now at the end of your preclinical studies we get some of the promising compounds and they are being evaluated in the humans. Now, after this, after the preclinical studies, the third one, what we have is the clinical trials. Right? The third one, what we have is the clinical trials. Dear doctor, the clinical trials, this particular session was discussed in the previous session. Right? I have discussed about the entire clinical trials in one of my previous session and that session of the clinical trials you just please add to the continuation of the preclinical studies here and that will complete the entire discussion of the new drug development system.